Welcome to Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180 for the best in Saturday Talk Radio at 1 o'clock and on 1230 KGEO at 10 o'clock Saturday and for the very best in Wednesday Talk Radio on 1410 KERI Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Your host is Clay Kerner and I'm Marty Pay and behind the big board is Greg Held, our producer. Hey, Clay, great show with um, former senatorial candidate and author Bruce Hershenson last week. Yeah, Bruce, scary individual. He is scary. You know, I've always liked him. Uh, He was an announcer for KABC for years, and uh, his book, Obama's Globe, I highly recommend, but you're right, it is a little scary. Yeah, it's scary. And in light of what's happening right now in the Middle East this week... uh, (laughs) Bruce is right on. Bruce is right on, unfortunately. Our second guest did a great job, Jennifer Pitcher from uh, Current Citizens for Sustainable Government, talking about pension reform and prison realignment in California. Two great guests. A lot of debating on uh, pension reform. Yeah, yeah. Today we have two special guests, actually three. In the second half, we have Pedro Rios, a candidate for uh, Assembly. But in the first half, we have an old friend of the program, Carlos Benvenidos. He's not that old. Well, old friend. I oh. mean, we've known him for a couple of years from Bakersfield Rescue Mission, along with Tim Callahan, Director of Community Development. Carlos, Tim, welcome to Taking Care of Business. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks Good morning. So congratulations are in order, I understand. Yeah, we're celebrating uh, 60 years this year. You know, um, for 60, you guys look pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do, Tim. Carlos, yeah. well, you know, yeah. what are you going to do? Some gray hairs are showing. <laughs> we won't say anything. So t- tell us about the 60th anniversary. Yeah, we have an anniversary uh, coming up uh, October the 12th. We're celebrating it at Vi- Valley Bible Fellowship. Uh, it's going to be a great evening of celebrating what the mission has been in this community. It's been a, a staple that uh, has provided hope and restoration to the many homeless folks that have come in through through our doors. You, you guys do. I, I remember the last time we had you on was, uh, I think it was our first show of the year two years ago. And I remember walking through the complex that day. Uh, Clay was giving me a hard time, but just walking through and having one of your people give me a, a tour of the place, and it was amazing what you guys do. It's, it's incredible. You know, we do a whole lot with not a whole lot, and um, just serving folks in the community. There's just there's such a need right now to help that person that you know may be unemployed, may be homeless, uh, that just needs a hand up, and uh, we provide that avenue there at the mission. We also have a 12-month uh, discipleship program for both men and women that helps folks that are coming out of addictions that want to get their life back on track and it's uh it's just uh to me it's a uh, very rewarding and just uh, amazing of, of the work that we're able to do down there we feel fortunate to, to have that in our in our under our care mm-hmm. yours is a christian-based organization is that correct yes we're faith-based that's right so what if somebody is not interested in <coughs> faith you Are know they that's still eligible to participate or be there absolutely you know uh we we don't uh obviously we are faith-based we Jesus Christ is the center of everything that we do. But if they don't want to accept Christ, we're okay with it. We're still doing things in the name of Christ. We're, mm-hmm. we're giving a plate of food in the name of Christ. We are providing a shower. We're providing the, the resources in the name of Christ for them to use. And if it's really up to them. It's their choice, but we, we do it in, in, in that manner. And do you try to convert them from their current religion to any particular religion? Oh, no, not necessarily. We give them a choice. If that's that's their choice, you know, uh, uh, to accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. It's really not. It's something that we emphasize, but we don't we don't uh, push it on anybody. Have you seen a lot of uh, conversions over the years? Over the years, we have. We actually are tracking that now. Before it was not tracked pre- previously. To me coming on board, but now we're tracking that, and, and we're seeing that. It, and even this, if, you know, if they don't want to accept Christ there's still a seed that's planted in that person it's it's the love of Christ and it's a and it's something that you know we we exemplify in everything that we do every single staff member does it you know the homeless center has a tremendous reputation in Bakersfield uh, deservedly so I must say sure. and you've had a great board of directors <coughs> over the years and I understand you just changed your board of directors recently what's what's the term limit for a board a board members uh, three years and how many are on the board? Right now there's 10, and it's comprised of uh, uh, businessmen and women in the community. And where do you get your money? Uh, a lot of it is uh, a lot of fundraising that we do. Tim and I work really hard uh, with getting the word out. I just uh, 
we had Tim Callahan that just joined us about a year ago, and he's helping us with a lot of the fundraising aspects of of just getting the word out through video, through uh, just telling the mission story. And churches get involved in what we do as well. That's a good backing. Uh, very little government help. Very, very little. Because um, there's no money to give. I, I think the cool thing to, that we, we pride ourselves on at the mission is that we can literally say that we're a mission that's that's supported by the community. I mean, that's mm. uh, not a lot of nonprofits, um, unfortunately, today can say that because uh, there's a need for state and local assistance, um, which is important. But I, I think the cool thing in this day and age to be able to say is that we're literally supported by the people that live and work around us. And, you know, I think that was the original intent <coughs> of Founding Fathers was for the community to become involved like that. Yeah, right. Our in-studio guests, Carlos Baldovinos and Tim Callahan from Bakersfield Rescue Mission. Do you guys, uh, you said you get a little bit of um, support from the government. Does that impact what you do or how you do it at all, the government, having the government involved? Um, I, I think it does. Um, but, again, the government, there's no money to give, so... I mean, there all agencies throughout the county are are struggling with it, with you know just being uh, again everything just tightened up in the last few years. Well, Carlos, tell me about a day in the life of one of your residents. Well, let's talk about uh, a disciple a person that's going through a discipleship program. They get up in the morning, 6 a.m. They have uh, breakfast as a group. They have devotions. Then there's classes that they go in classes such as relapse prevention because obviously they want to work through these issues there's some bible study um there's also what we call ministry assignments given back to the mission such as you know helping with um you know if it's maintenance if it's landscaping if it's some light janitorial they do have to help with that it's it's part of the program um then to go back into some more bible study then there's fitness we have uh, uh fitness class for for them that they can partake in and uh, just some group sessions in the evenings and uh, that's what they do for 12 months what, what kind of counseling do they get one-on-one -on -one counseling mm -hmm. you know a lot of these folks turn to really drug addiction alcohol addiction or any other addiction because there's there was underlying issues there and the drug or the alcohol or whatever other things that we're using um, was just uh, a ways to deal with it sure, and so, so we're dealing with one-on-one -on -one with them so do you have counselors come in from outside or? we have our own counselors yes um, but we also have uh, counselors that come in and volunteer such as pastors mm -hmm. they do come and volunteer and teach again this like Tim said it's a community effort we have pastors from various denominations that come in and help us uh, with teaching and and the one-on-one -on -one counseling and just really taking folks in you know, one thing you probably don't know because you've only been here a couple of years, but um, my dad used to sing Christian music, and he would travel around the country and go to Christian camps and be one of the singers. And when he was in town here, he used to go to the rescue mission and sing there. And this was, he'd passed away almost three years ago now. But it was always enjoyable. I'd go with him once in a while to listen to him sing, and he really loved going out there. And oh. Car Carlos, I have to tell you, that's not something Clay inherited, because when Clay sings in the shower, the water stops. <laughs> it's, it's an ugly thing. It's an act of nature. How would you know that, Marty? <laughs> <laughs> well, over the last three years we've done the show, Clay, we've gotten pretty close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, you've got the um, celebration, the banquet, and Tim, there's also a golf tournament that's going along with that yeah so actually that week is we're calling it a celebration week um, the mission was founded in october 1952 uh, and we've chose to celebrate uh, this october for the week uh, it will start on the 9th with uh, an open house at the mission uh, and then followed by the 11th our banquet you can find information online facebook uh, as well as our website thebrm.org and then the next day we have a golf tournament what's that website again uh, thebrm.org okay uh, and then the next day, uh, the Friday, the last day of the week, we will uh, kind of relax and also enjoy a nice uh, day of golf at uh, Rio Bravo Country Club on the east side of town. Tickets uh, for a player are $125. That includes lunch uh, and also a program that we'll do uh, involving our residents. And, and people will really be able to see, aside from playing golf, I mean, that's obviously the, the point of this golf sure. tournament, uh, but they'll really be able to see who uh, they're helping and the mission that um, they're being involved in. So uh, any golfers out there who want to uh, golf for a great cause, uh, you can join ours. 
Now, will some of the uh, residents, I, I believe, I presume your residents are one day at a time or a week at a time or a month at a time. How does that work? Um, well, rephrase that question like, I mean, they come in, a lot of them do come in, you know, periodically. Well, let's come back. I yeah. think Marty's going to take us on yeah. a break here. Yeah, let's let's take a break, and then when we come back, that's a great question to, to start off with. Yeah. You know, what do people come in daily? Do they come in monthly? And, and you've got a 12-month program, so some people must be there for an extended period of time. Correct. So let's hit that when we come back. We'll be back in a moment on Taking Care of Business on <coughs> Current Radio News Talk 1180.